Can you beat every shrine in Tears of the Kingdom without ever using an ability? But what exactly is an ability? It's a little less clear-cut than what was in Breath of the Wild, so let's go over the rules. First, the L menu is off-limits. Second, I'm banning the Sage abilities. And finally, I'm gonna allow glitches, but I'll try to avoid them at all costs whenever possible. While there are some shrines that are gonna require glitches, if we can find an alternate solution, that's the one we'll use regardless of how painful. So let's get started on the journey with the Great Sky Islands. As for shrine number one, normally you'd pick Ukowu, but we actually will be doing Inisa first instead. That said, without Ultra Hand, the path getting there is interesting. For the rail, we could shield surf down it, but then we need to grab speed and stamina food for the next bit. If we cook those, this will give us enough speed and stamina to get across the water and into Inisa. You could bait a nearby construct to fuse a rock to a weapon and then take him down to steal it. And with that, we could finally do our first shrine. The only exception to doing this as normal now is the firefruit section, but we could throw the fruit at the leaves instead of fusing it. Let's start a counter for these. On to shrine 2, which is actually going to be Ukowu. But before that, we need keys or like like parts. Their parts can be fused with hot footed frogs, which we can also get in the Sky Islands to make a 3 tier speed elixir. With the elixir, we can finally enter Ukowu. The first gap is easy enough to hop over, but gap 2 is too large. It's possible to move this block on the wall by hitting it, and after hitting it a lot of times, I was able to get up on top. From the top, a simple jump and shield surf will clear gap 2. As for the last room, speedrunners figured out with a speed elixir and wing shield it's possible to hop on the rail, but we can't get a wing shield at this point. Instead, we can knock the hook on the ground over and let it hang just slightly off. With the speed elixir, it's actually possible to make it directly on top of this rail with a standard shield and shield surf to the end. Now for Shrine 3, which is actually the first one requiring glitches. I'm on the latest version of 1.2.0, but there are other ways of doing this in the older versions as well. Put Link's back against a wall and drop a bow. Equip another and drop the second, then exit the menu. This is called smuggling, and lets Link hold an arrow without the bow. With this, we can hold the arrow, jump, press X, then enter bullet time. From here, we could jump and enter bullet time repeatedly for infinite jumps. This shrine really didn't have anything else we could work with, and the Great Sky Island doesn't have enough resources for any other solution. But generally speaking, we won't need this glitch much. As for getting back to the Temple of Time, we can go to the nearby building and push a box over to use it as a step instead of a sin. From here, break the icicle for a wing, and then we're clear back to the Temple of Time. After Raru graces us with his sight again and tells us there's another one, we trick back to get it. You'd think getting to it is easy, but without being able to use Recall, we need a different way up. Back at the device spencer near Shrine 3, we can get some random Zonai devices. With these, we can stack wings and use the speed up to actually just jump and climb our way to Shrine 4. Before going in through this one, we also require a speed elixir. The rushing water is an issue, but we can actually jump off the rafts to make it up to the second platform easily without Recall. As for the waterfall, well, with our limited access and great sky islands, we once again need infinite jump, but this is the last usage of it for a while. To get into the door, we need the speed food we made. Get onto this lamp and time a jump right before the door opens. The speed elixir gives us just enough height to do this, and with a really well-timed jump, you can get through with just a normal shield. We're almost free to roam now, we just need to exit the great sky islands. As for getting to the door, we can jump onto the right gear and ride it up, but getting to the outer platform is a bit more difficult. Shield jumping doesn't quite make it far enough, so here's the fun cheese. While we can't fuse Zonai devices, we can still spawn them, and if we spawn a bunch of wings on this edge, we can get close enough that we can actually make the jump to finally give up the broken Master Sword. With that, we can exit the Great Sky Islands and mostly open up the rest of the shrines. Before we dive into individual ones, there are a bunch of combat shrines that are entered and done normally, which are listed on screen. Additionally, there's a chunk of blessings that never required abilities or anything special, so we'll bump the counter for these two. One last thing before we get to more shrines is the towers. While not in the rule set, I did want to see if these were doable, and most can be done normally except for these five, but we'll get back to them in a bit. For now, back to shrines. Inside a Kochi, you drop a piece of wood that partially covers the switch. Stand on the launch platform, then throw a fire fruit. The campfire will trigger the switch and get Link across. For the next room, we need the Zora Arbor, and it can be retrieved without abilities. You might think we need the camera for Giotto, but we can actually get the armor right after clearing the Statue of Mud. If we glide into the waterfall, we could shoot up, getting enough height to enter the last room. The final bit we could do like the first, but drop a fire choo-choo jelly and trigger with an arrow since we can't throw the fruit quite that far. Next up, Geocene, and with a 3 tier speed buff, we could just shield jump room 1. 
For room two though, we need another solution. And while you might think we go for infinite height, we don't need it. There's a spot near Kakariko with two constructs who have spring shields, and we can get a free copy of each anytime there's a blood boon. And they finish off the shrine. Before the next one, we can also get wing shields for free at this spot on the map, and we need it for Sapapa. If we're quick, we can use the wing shield twice to get up this platform and wall in the beginning. Firefruits will do room 2, and in room 3 we need to slot the orb to unlock door 1. Since the flat area is larger in door 2, we can wing shield jump onto this lamp and then jump and paraglide around lock door number 2 to complete the shrine. Next up, Mogawak. We can ignore everything except the battery and carry it straight to the elevator. Drop some electric choo-choos on the pad beside it and explode one. At first, it'll only take you up a little bit and you'll fall back down, but it'll charge back up a second time for some reason and carry you straight to the top. In Timowak, the first section could just be hopped over. In room 2, the blocks aren't close enough to get to the orb, but Splash Fruit fixes that problem, though they can't be ridden directly back with the orb. In the last room, if we grab the fan and turn it on, we can paraglide up, then use the hydrant to make a bridge across and to the inn. Runicate Shrine if we go up to the orb and hit it with a bomb, nothing happens. But if we lay two bombs down and enter bullet time, then explode them, it'll get knocked to the starting platform. From here, we can simply push it in for another Light of Blessing. For Aroma Walk Shrine, we could easily knock out the first room by just throwing a bomb. As for room two, we need to get up somehow. Grab two of the rockets and bring them to the cart. If you stand in the cart while holding them, then run forward, they should drop into it perfectly. It's a bit finicky, but with this setup, I managed to get Link up to the top platform. We might seem stuck here, but it is possible to stand on the rockets and ground slam them, letting you ride them to the end. Gataka Shrine has no ability requirement, so glide like normal. The Overworld has some tricky puzzles too, and the Cave Crystal for Ikatak is one of them. Naturally, I opted for Octobloons, but even with campfires and pine cones, which make larger updrafts if you didn't know, it still wasn't enough to get it out, but it was close. Which means one thrown bomb is enough to finish it, and the updraft will let us follow. Once up, we can carry it like normal. For in Oma, if you launch out of the Poplar Sky Tower and stop moving with your paraglider, you can drop a wing and then fall onto it. Even without any attached Zonai devices, it'll glide far enough to get us to the crystal. Then we can simply grab the crystal and drop it into the Whirlpool for Shrine Complete. While well, Mayachideg Shrine is a combat shrine, it's still worth talking about. I generally found this one quite difficult, but even without abilities, the homing carts and cannons can still be triggered. We can't fuse them, but if you distract with the homing cart, you can mop up by simply holding the cannon. So, funny story about Jochiu. I initially just chucked bombs until I knocked the orb back like a barbarian. Then I thought the little platform would go up if I chained electricity over to it with jellies and metal weapons, but it turns out it actually goes to where the orb was and would have made the shot easier, so yeah. Needlessly complicated due to my impatience. Oh right, rest of the shrine. You can octo-balloon the orb up, then toss a bomb to get it to the top platform. Once it's up, hold some items to move it and push it to the pedestal. Over to Katawak and you might think we need spring shields, but actually no. With a speed elixir, it's possible to just run up the first ramp till it lowers and then hop across. Aiming from the side of the seesaw in the next bit, we can hit it with an octoballoon and lift it up, then hop onto it. With the speed boost and lifted ramp, you can actually just hop up the next bit. The launcher at the end didn't get Link high enough, but that's okay. Sticking bomb plants under it will blast us up and then we can paraglide to the end. Sutsu Oom. Um. To start, we can hop on the spike and hitch a ride upwards. Once near the orb, I started experimenting with bomb flowers. Turns out you can get the orb stopped on the spike, letting us move over, then attach some octo balloons. It should land back at the nearby platform, but it's too tricky to go directly from the goal for here, so bombs to get it on the main floor first. After pushing it near the goal, we need two bombs exactly since the goal has a roof to knock it in perfectly and clear the shrine. Morak Shrine seems difficult, but it's actually quite easy. Once we get to the spring, we can just attach Octobloons repeatedly until we get to the shrine exit. Tukarok is another easy one. Using Octobloons, the orb can be fished directly up, and then a bomb will knock it onto the top floor. This skips the puzzle entirely, and if we're holding items, we can easily push it in the goal. Tack off another easy one with Gimmimic. Dropping bombs near each candle, we can detonate them all in bullet time, and effectively light them all at once. Up next is Kamatukis, and I gotta shout out one of my viewers, Ice Cream Cone, for this. I knew that bombs or octoballoons would be the solution for knocking the orb over, but they help find the correct position for the bombs, which is two bombs side by side in the gap behind the orb. Though once it's over, it can get stuck, but we can solve that with an octoballoon. Ehin Ah. In room 1, we can use bullet time to manipulate the hoverstone positions and jump directly up. 
For room two, the gaps are too big for us to do much with, but if we get on top of the metal plate and octo balloon it, we can continually place them until we're able to glide across. In the last room, the orb can be bombed across, but the angle is a bit tricky. Once it's in though, we can octo balloon the hover stones until we're high enough to glide across. Quick break from shrines, let's grab Rebella Wetlands Tower. While the rain is a pain, did you know it's possible to burn the spikes in it? Drop a flame emitter and keep it against a spike. As long as it's on for the time it takes to burn, it'll get destroyed, even in the rain. The first two rooms in Utsushak can be brute forced with bombs, but the last room requires another solution. Shield Surfs will actually get Link across rails, and even when he stops, you can just surf again, making this one an easy clear. Which is the same cheese that I use for Geokoam. The last section looks more complicated, but you can just keep shield surfing and even drop to the lower track halfway through, as the snapping is quite gracious. In the first room with Taji Cats, the log can be octo balloon to get up the first platform, but the second presents a much larger gap. Instead of the log, throw a white choo choo jelly into the water and octo balloon the new ice block. Yeah, you could ride these bad boys upwards, and you know that adds a lot of power to our arsenal. You can do this for the rest of the shrine too, but I preserve some items by using the spring shield from Kamizun. Choo choo jellies and Zora armor make the ending water pool an easy clear. Quick break from shrines, let's grab two more towers. At the Thyplo Ruins Tower, there's a platform blocking the top, and a single Octo Bloom will fish it off. They also come in handy at the Gerudo Skyview Tower, where we need to raise this lift. One Octo Bloom at a time, repeated over and over, will do just that. The remaining towers we'll get to later. Let's talk Sky Shrines. A lot of them might seem out of reach, but if we drop a wing midair, we can make it to shrines like Maya Mechas. With this one, once we're there, the inside is done normally. Also in the sky is Jira Tagumak, and I spent a lot of time figuring this one out glitchless. I had a lot of ideas, but what worked was actually the carts on the left. First, I got one down to the less slanted surface. Octo balloon it and place bombs below. Before the balloon pops or gets too far, hop on it and let it fall. That's right, we got bomb launches now in Tears of the Kingdom without the rune. With some luck, this will get you high enough to glide to the end. And then we have Rossiwak. Getting her across the water we can do with Ice Choo Choo Jelly, and the following platform can be reached with an Octo Balloon. The switch in the ending section can't be moved with items, so instead we need to push the yellow orbs to the end. Using Octo Balloons to get these on the switch is finicky, but doable if you throw your weapon at it to push it while in air, making it shrine complete. Room 1 in Sukuku can be done with a well-timed bomb throw to get the orb out and in the goal. Originally I just threw a bunch of Octo Balloons on the gear to turn it for room 2, but I found a cooler method in post. If you look directly at the gear lever and lock on, then jump, you can get up on it. From there, jump with a two-handed weapon and jump slash to get on top of the gears with the lever, and then you can climb up easily. Down in the bottom of Zanmik, bombs will knock the orbs out of the pit. Once out, move it near the back of the shrine and then get it out from under the ceiling. By throwing octo balloons at it, we can get it high enough to then knock it onto the next level with arrows. After getting back up, we can easily roll it to the pedestal for a shrine complete. At the start of Ishodag, we can actually just run up the wall and jump up. Once across the water, we somehow need to get up higher. Technically, octo balloons work, but bomb launches look cooler, so that was my go-to. Sarah to Bomek, jeez, these shrine names. Basically, for all levels, my solution was to try and get these plates propped up against the wall or a lamp. With some bombs underneath and a detonation jelly, the blast carries link up to the next spot. Only note is on the second level that instead of propping up the plate, you could just use one octo balloon, then break it to fall onto the bombs for an easier launch. Grin is is quite the simple one. Trigger an orb to fall, then toss an octo balloon in front of it. With a good angle, this will clear both the first and second rooms, though the orbs behave quite strangely after they have a balloon attached and slow down. I'm not really sure what causes this. Jojone has no special requirements to enter or clear. I wanted to point it out though because I thought I couldn't get up at first, but then I found a spring on the lower floor. For Suzuyai, the first roadblock is the rolling wheel section, but you can just run over it with a speed boost. As for the door, bombs will actually work in place of recall and rotate the wheel. The last room gives us a few wheels to work with and Octobloons can lift them, carrying us up. With some height, a Shield Surf will put Link on the rail and the path to the end. Mayachin's only requirement is hitting these targets and bombs work just fine. After a Blood Moon, we can pick up more Spring Shields and after multiple, we can even get more than two in the inventory. Into Sonopan. On the left, we can barely stand on this wall, but that gives enough height to jump up with a Wing Shield. The next section requires a spring shield instead. Into the last room and with a second spring shield we can make it across and get up to the end. For Taraka Walk, use block 1 to jump up, then bombs to get block 2 by the ladder. We can't jump up to the ladder, but Octobloons once again carry us up. 
Instead of stopping at the ladder though, we could actually chain them to get enough height to just glide to the exit. Gasa Shrine took some creativity. Knock the first block down, then grab a barrel and carry it to the next section. If you set it just on the edge of this metal block and need a 3 tier speed boost, you can get on top and jump to the next section. That speed boost also lets us clear to the next section where we need to substitute for Ultra Hand. How about a bomb? Throw it at the top of the chest and it should knock it back to the platform to get the key. The last room we can use a similar strat, but it'll only swing the orb instead. Cutting the rope with an arrow will let it keep its momentum and get it onto the ground. From there we can push it into the pedestal and get another light of blessing. Sadaka walks up next and this one really stumped me at first. I thought I'd need to do something with Octobloons, but I had an epiphany after a bit that I could just bomb launch off these wooden plates. That gets us up, but we can't use bombs to trigger the switch for the next room. Instead, we can Octoballoon one of the actual balloons into position, then put a piece of wood in it to carry it up. As for the final room, we can throw Octoballoons at the orb, and then a bomb once it's high enough to knock it into the pedestal. Kiyu Yoyo -Yo might seem like a massive pain if you know the shrine, but it's actually quite easy. Using Octoballoons, we could roll the ice block in the first room towards the switch. While you'd normally need the plate to keep the fire from melting the block and leaving the door open, we don't actually need to leave it open. If the ice block presses the switch while we're at the door, we could slip through before the fire melts it away. Kikakin's floor plate can be lifted with an octobloom, but otherwise it's done normally. The first gap in Murakagook might look too far to cross glitchless, but with a speed boost and an octobloom, we can land on the bridge instead. For Lava Pit 1, we can position the first machine to get across, and for 2, we can make a walkway with splash fruit. Surprisingly, these rock blocks can actually be octobloom, which gives us a route up to the next platform. For the last room, we can lift the ball, so throw them in and clear like normal. Moving on to Jonesau, bomb plants will clear the triggers for the first two rooms. For the last room, Firefruit will burn the wood and knock the elevator thing down. It's quite slow, but Octobloons can raise this up, and yeah, this took about 50 Octobloons. Originally, I thought we'd need infinite height for Makassara, but found a glitchless solution. Room 1, we can get up with a single spring shield. Up top, we can trigger the stabilizer, then climb up to paraglide across gap 1. Gap 2 is a bit too big to jump across even with the spring shield from the stabilizer, but if we use bombs to push the stabilizer to the edge, we can just barely reach the end. Joju Octobloom the Fallen Bridge Drop some bombs and get on top. The launch will blast you up and you can glide to the end. Riagok was the first shrine I thought truly impossible, but I proved myself wrong and we can even do it glitchless. Start the gear and get on it by jumping onto a tooth near the wall. This lets us glide over to the stationary gear and land in the small window. Throw a bomb at the gear axle and Link's ragdoll will let him slip between the gear and wall, getting to the next room. We need vertical height, and you know what that means. We can use the cylinder at the bottom and climb on it to get to the platforms. Then each platform can be ballooned directly up and to the end. For Saha Road, there's one spot you'd normally need a sin, but a spring shield will do the trick. Apparently it's normal to use a send at the end of this shrine, but I never did that in my standard playthrough since you could just jump through the lasers at the very end of this section. Mostly we've had issues inside a shrine so far, but Ijo O looks like we might not be able to get to it. That said, if you drop a wing mid-flight and land on it, you can indeed make it over. I wanted to skip the shields on this one, so use a campfire for the ice and a well-timed jump to get over the fire. As for the end, we aren't given a rocket shield, but if we stack rockets back near the fire section, it is possible to just jump on top and ride one directly to the end. For Abagak Shrine, we can place some bombs down to launch the orb from the first platform over to the pedestal. And for room 2, we can use the wing for a bomb launch, letting us glide to the end. Katana Seas, we can reuse the bomb on the trigger strat and then spring shield up to the end. I actually had a really cool strat for Jochi Ihiga and was going to use Ice Chuchus to make a bridge for the crystal, but then I realized it's possible to just carry the crystal across land to above the shrine, then drop down. You'd think Sabajitak would be as simple as a few spring shields, but if we jump from below, we can't make it with a spring shield. We can still do a glitchless though with a pretty precise spring shield jump from the entry getting us just barely onto the middle platform. From there, a couple more spring shields will get us to the end. Some Sky Island shrines like Mogasari can't be reached with wings and we can't fuse machines. Luckily there's a pre-built one on a nearby island. Operating these don't require abilities and lets us get just enough height to reach the shrine. As for the interior, you can basically just jump between platforms and solve as normal. Oshapin is a cave blessing but actually presents an issue. We need to get this crystal over lava and while you might normally use a machine, there is a hydrant nearby. If we slowly carry it and build a bridge, we could then carry the crystal across and unlock the shrine. Gomizuin might seem like we need infinite height, but spring shields save us again. By landing on the lanterns and jumping again off the edge, we can make it to the top. 
As for the cage puzzle, it's actually possible to hop outside and get on top while it's rotating, making this one complete. Zakasu seems normal as we can complete the Shield Surf quest and clear the constructs normally by using the candle to ride the balloon up. However, we need to clear the lower enemies first before we go up or throw the candle off, as once it's up, there's not really a way to get the balloon back down if it hits the ceiling. For Oa Gim, there's a crystal we need to get across water, but we can't build a Zonai machine for this. It's possible to grab the crystal and get it to the base of the waterfall. From here, we could set it down and create an ice block with choo-choo jellies or ice fruit. If we ride this block out a ways, we could then make a bridge of ice to get the crystal to its intended spot, though it is quite easy to drop it in the water. If you do, you could fish it back out with an octobloon, or in some places it's possible to just directly pick it back up. For room 1 in Jakais, we could use our earlier retrieved wing shield to get up the block and step. From this gap, a spring shield will get us up top, but at this point you'd think us stuck as we'd normally need ascend. There's a plate you'd ascend through, but we could position a bit further out with bombs. From there, get up on top and octobloon while standing on the top of it. You'd think the wall extends to the ceiling, but it actually doesn't, and with some perseverance, we can get up and above it and glide to the exit. With the flame breaker armor, we can grind across the rails with a shield serve to make our way to the Blessing Geotech Shrine. My egg is up next, and at first I thought I'd be able to use campfires on the switch, but I wasn't able to get them set up. Instead, we can use exactly 7 bombs on the orb. Enter bullet time from this switch and detonate while staying in bullet time until the orb is about to land in the channel, then exit bullet time. Once it's about to exit the channel, we can trigger the switch to get to the next room. In the next room, head up top and push the ball into the channel, then dive down. As long as you're ahead of the orb, you can trigger the switch and get the last door open. Oshuzan U is made faster than normal by just chucking bombs at the targets. Let's grab one of our two missing towers, the Sahasra Slope one. In the quest to Marariet on Eventide, there's a moblin with a fire breath Lysel blade. If we stand near the spears at the tower from the outside wall and swing the blade so that the end of the animation would hit the spear on the inside, it'll actually catch them on fire. Wait for both to burn up, then you can open the doors and get inside. Rutafa Um features a crystal in water. Octobaloons can't fish it out, and standing on ice doesn't let us pick it up. We can drop bombs in the water though, and detonating them will still apply force to the crystal, letting us fish it out, then carry it for our light of blessing. Now Yosepun almost stopped me. I had some success by using Octobaloons to pile up the balls and then speed boost through, but they just seemed to respawn too fast. Somehow I was able to get one in the starting area with an Octobloon though, and that means we get bomb launch in. With a whole stock of bombs and a choo-choo detonator we can get on top then zoom to the next section. The second ball can be knocked over with a fairly precise angle and two bombs. Room 3 is cleared with a simple Octobloon throw and two bombs can be used to knock the final orb in and claim light number 101. Even though we could just brute force past the first electric water in Tatarok, the devs really tried to stop me with the block in the water that can't be Octobloon. That's fine though, because there's lava nearby and we could use a splash fruit to make a block. That block can be carried over and Octoblooned up to clear the shrine regardless of what the devs wanted. Rutsu Mamu Seesaw 1 can be cleared by dropping the metal barrel while walking up, but Seesaw 2 is too heavy to weigh down. Instead, we can lift it up with Octobloons, though the process is a bit slow and requires placing them multiple times till we could jump to the end. Taken to the sky now, Mayanas is a bit higher than we can get, but there's a pre-built Zonai machine near Mount Lodeiru Sky Tower that could take us there. The crystal can just be dropped on the island below and carried to the shrine. As for the inside, the bullseye is a bit too far to just throw a bomb, but we can walk on the spikes and brute force through to get close enough to trigger it. Second room doesn't need to be done, but I did it since it's easy as you can just throw a bomb from here. Inside Sawakama and a 3 tier speed boost is enough to get across all 3 gaps. Chichin presents a bit different of an issue. Under the quicksand we run into some levers. We can move them with octobloons, but they don't quite pull it all the way. First option is to throw a bomb, but sometimes that doesn't work, so option 2 is to smack it with a heavy weapon multiple times until it's in place. In the ascend section it's actually possible to just climb through the gap. Octobloons or bombs can move the plates and then the same tactic for the last switch to get into this blessing. For Mayat Shrine, we can use a bomb launch again, but instead of Octobloons, place the bombs where the sled would fall and jump on it as it hits them. To get through the moving sand, turns out you can just continually run and jump through it. Once loaded in to Kadanasar, jump up top the entry rod. Use some speed food, then paraglide out and onto the wall to the left, and once on, we can run across to the orb. You might think we need to retrieve it from the other side, but actually no. Dropping some shields or other items on the spot it would fall causes it to roll off before launching, though it tends to roll off the ledge, which makes a problem. Roll it off the left side instead of the right, then build a pathway out of campfires. This will catch the orb after it rolls off, and then we can put it in the slot for shrine complete. 
For Karaha Dog, use an item to hold the plate down, then throw fire fruit to light the torches. Back to difficult shrines, there's Maya Mods. After getting up to the second platform, bombs don't seem to be able to move the big metal ball. After some experimenting, if you throw an octobloon sort of behind it, you can get it to roll to the wall, and from there, bombs can move it. Once it's down, move it to the wall near the next section. With speed food up, we can wall jump off this spot to get on it, then up to the higher platform. Shield surfing can get us to the end of the rail in the final room, but we still need to get the orb. Throwing octobloons directly up with good timing will work, but they tend to pull it away from the rail, so try to catch it right as it's leaving the channel. Once it's on a balloon, arrows can steer it into the rail with a bit of persistence and luck. Octobloons one more time to carry it back to the previous room till we reach the gap, then a full 20 bombs on the ground to get it back to the starting section. With that, it can be rolled into the goal to finish the shrine. Phew, as a break after that one, we can grab Otutsum for a blessing that I forgot to include at the start. For Sitsum, we can ride the pre-built Zona devices across the lava and across the final gap with no issue. Mimosik Shrine Crystal is retrieved easy enough, and to get it back to the shrine, we can make a path with Splash Fruit to carry the crystal over the lava. There is a ledge that doesn't seem like you can get up, but if you go diagonally, Link will step up it. Oh, and if anyone asks, yes, the blue rocks to the cave entrance can be destroyed by bombs, it just requires more than one to break each rock. For Gikaku, we can grab a Zonai device in the North Akala Sky Archipelago to reach it. The crystal can then be taken directly below to claim another Light of Blessing. Also in the sky is Kuma Main. We can get the crystal by defeating a Flux Construct, but we need to get it up and over a gap. Octobloons were promising, but the Lionel Bow and five Octobloons will cross the gap, but still not quite high enough. Drop some wings, then Octobloon it once again. With the Arrow Force, we can get it across fast enough to pick it up before the Octobloons pop. Once across, it's a straight walk to the shrine. Natak we can once again reach with a mid-glide wing, and this will be our method to get to most Sky Shrines. To get the crystal out of the spear, start by throwing an Octobloon at the control. It'll actually rotate it like Ultra Hand would, and I managed to get it into the perfect position on first try. As for getting the crystal out, we can spot and stack wings until we can climb up. From here, Octobloons and arrows again to get it across and to the Blessing Shrine. Kudanar is a Sky Shrine without a crystal. Hydrants can be used to make lava blocks and bombs to clear the way. The final pit with moving lava can be cleared with splash fruit to quickly jump across since the hydrants aren't fast enough. Simosawa can be reached with wing, but you need to drop it as soon as possible after jumping from the tower to have enough height. Once you're over, you can dive through the rings to unlock the shrine and take out the constructs normally. For Mayan, we take another construct down, but Octobloons definitely won't cross this gap. There are air platforms nearby and one happens to have a rocket prefused on it. This takes us up to the height we need, then chat came up with the idea of dropping more rockets to move it forward. As long as they hit the dragon's head, it doesn't need to be fused, and using this, we'll get to the crystal and the shrine without issue. We could use the same trick for Tenanude as there's a platform inside the crystal cave. I was gonna rocket this one again, but as it turns out, if you stand on the corner and lift a crystal, it will actually move the platform, and we can do this over and over to get the distance. To get the better height we need, we can once again use Octobloons and clear another blessing. For Josiu, we can actually fly from the top of the Great Sky Island to get over. Just like with Kuma Main, we can Octobloon with a Lionel Bow to get a crystal across. Wings won't get us up to Kahatanam, but they will get us to the Wind Temple Climb. Dropping springs and following the intended path will get us most of the way, but then I got stuck at the section where Ascend is intended. A viewer showed me a clip of getting up by launching a rocket directly up and jumping onto it, but I couldn't quite pull it off. Instead, it was possible to get up by activating a hoverstone and dropping octobloons. If we keep recharging the battery and chaining octobloons, this will take Link up to another blessing. Ga Ahisas, we can't directly reach from a tower, but there's an island below with a pre-built Zonai machine. After draining the water, we can clear most of the light puzzle like normal except for getting the last mirror over. Creating ice blocks will make a path to get the mirror across. The construct below has a shield and we actually want to grab this one and save it. Once you've got the light reflecting down, you can use the shield to open up the entrance to a Light of Blessing. We can use the same Zonai pre-built device as last time to get up to Mayasiar and solve the puzzle like normal. Once again, using the same device, we can pick up the crystal from the Flux Construct and fly upwards. Landing the crystal on the above island does prove difficult though. I found that exiting when you're just at the island's height makes preventing it from falling off much easier. And the same pre-built device can once again be used to get to the diving challenge for Tanhi, making it an easy clear as the inside doesn't require abilities normally. Sia Mutsus appears to be a blessing but isn't so simple. At first I thought this would be quite difficult since I couldn't reach the torches by throwing fruit, but once again a viewer came to aid, reminding me we can light arrows with the candle. And with that, this shrine becomes simple, banking us 127. 
Rakashog is another light-based puzzle, but this time inside the shrine. The shield we got from Ga Ahisas lets us clear room 1 easily, but room 2 looks like a showstopper. We have access to two mirrors, and it's possible to stack them in front of the gate. Once stacked, we can use a two-handed weapon to jump slash up top, jump slash again to the top of the door, and then jump onto the railing. From here, we can get through the window and behind the gate. As for the light, well that's still an issue since we can't just use a shield or another mirror. With Link facing the gate, drop a few shields, then drop the mirror shield. With the right positioning of shields and some luck, it should stay at the right angle and unlock the gate. Carrying the light into the next room with mirrors, we can get it directly over the ground plate. Then Octoballoon a mirror from ground level and use arrows to position it to unlock the last room. The last room can be done as normal if you take down the constructs. Woo, that was a rough one. Let's do an easy one after that. Shinadok, where we could use Octobloons and arrows like we done previously for an easy clear. Ukujisi has quite a long distance to clear and looks very problematic. Luckily, there's an air platform below though and we can pilot it to the crystal and then carry the crystal with rockets to the shrine. For Yansa Bean, we can start from Josiu and find a pre-built balloon lattice. This will get us the height to reach the island combined with a wing. Once on the island, the pedestal unlocks wind drafts that gets linked to the top and then we can dive through the lasers normally. The interior is mostly normal, but we have a single construct just out of reach. This is where I found out that rockets can actually break this stone, and I hadn't discovered that until now. With the last construct clear, we bank blessing number 131. Tinbiz was ultra easy. Enable low gravity and all targets can be cleared by a simple bomb throw. For Igashon, we can take a pre-built lattice from near Mayanas and make it to the water temple and shrine. Honestly, I'm pretty proud of the discovery I had here. If you stay in the first water bubble till the moment it's about to disappear then glide, you can get up on the platform without ever getting on the middle step. Yeah, I didn't expect that to work either and thought I'd need a spring shield originally. For the ending, we can octobloon this plate and catch a ride to the end. Utoja's Shrine, originally we were supposed to fuse, but that's off limits. The devs thought they were all clever wanting you to fuse, but they forgot about their own rock octoroks. Rock Octoroks can reroll the modifier, and for these spears we can get long throw, which means we don't need any fuse to throw through the hoop. Once again, grab a pre-built machine from Myonis, this time to fly to see a jog. And besides using Zonite charges, the rest is cleared normally by diving through rings. Jokuo is also no trouble. Despite the clouds over the Thunderhead Isles, we can reach it with a wing if we know the coordinates. Inside a Rochium, and this time we'll need a chunk of spring shields. You can jump onto the wall beside the gate, and then from that wall to the top part. Fall down and trigger the laser trap intentionally, and then once again use a spring shield to get up to the chest. This is where we would be stuck without a sin, but since the game saves the key in your inventory, you can simply exit the shrine and go back in. You'll have the key, and then can make your way back with the spring shield and unlock the orb. The small gate can be opened with a bomb and then the orb thrown through. As for getting the second one open, it's much easier to just octobloon the orb over the wall and then spring shield out. Put the orb in the pedestal and that marks shrine complete. For Sir Yotanag, we need to bait an enemy to use a Korok from before we go in. This lets us get the one wind blast we need to free the fan, which can then be used to clear all other sand piles. If we take a fan by the ledges we would normally ascend to, we could set them down. A shield surf will knock them over, then we can get up with the updraft. From here, we could set the light on the bottom pointing to the main room. The fan in this room can then be used to get back, and then we hit the problem of how to get the light to the exit mirror. The mirror in the room didn't seem promising till I found that the shields have collision with them. So if we drop a shield, then place the mirror on top of it, we can get just the right angle to reflect the light and open the final door. Next up is Tarakamik. For the first gear, we can stand on a tooth, then throw a yellow choo-choo jelly to activate it and get up. As for the second section, a spring shield does the trick, and for the final door, another jelly gets it done. Karakat tried. You'd think this one impossible without Ultra Hand. It took a lot of experimenting, but one of my viewers had a great idea of using a hover stone. If you get it in place, it'll hold its place, but even better, if we octobloon it and rotate then activate it, the octobloon will carry it up while the rotation stays the same. And as it turns out, you don't even need the shadow to be that accurate for this to unlock. Though there's another shrine quest we won't get off the hook so easily, namely Josiu's. Getting this crystal across the water is a pain as it'll despawn if you drop it, and the running water prevents us from just brute forcing it with ice. This was easily one of the most frustrating shrine quests. The solution that me and chat came up with was this. Drop a hover stone and a few rockets behind it. Get the crystal on top and activate the stone. Trigger the rockets and pick up the crystal so it doesn't fall, then hop off on the first island. On island 2, stack Zonai devices, mostly wings, to get a sort of short dock to get a better shot at the next island. Once far enough out, octobloon the crystal and multi-shot it over. 
From here, the same Hoverstone and Rocket trick will get it almost to the end, and then Octa Balloons and a bow again to finish the job. Wow, oh, we can do quite easily. Jump across and throw bombs to trigger both triggers, then Spring Shield to hop up both sections. If you've done all the shrines, you've probably been waiting to see if Korok Forest was possible, so let's tackle that now. If you jump out of the nearby tower and memorize the coordinate location of Sukumbomar, you can dive and manage to unlock it just before the fog voids you out. The downside is that even if we teleport back to it, the game still voids us out. Credit to Fishman or Fishy for this next bit. Down into the depths now to Rikatasum Lightroot. Smuggle a bow would go to 490 2151 under the Deku Tree. We could use the infinite jump to get partially through this edge in geometry, then shield surf to pop Link inside the wall. From here, it's hard to navigate since you can't see the walls, but head towards the pedestal you're intended to ascend to, then towards the Deku Tree. Once there, climb up and fall down the gap. This'll put us near the chamber where we normally fight Gloomhands and Phantom Ganon, and you can actually hit them from out of bounds. It does take a lot of arrows, but you can clear the fight. Once the cutscene triggers, you'll be popped in bounds, but unfortunately, getting up is still difficult. This is where the quick warp to Sakumba Bar comes in though. Now that the gloom is clear, we can teleport to the shrine and navigate Korok Forest without issue. We can actually use the same clipping technique to get out of bounds and up to the Gerudo Highlands Tower. On the left side, it's possible to get an autosave near the entrance, and if you reload it, you'll be popped in bounds, meaning we actually did manage to unlock every Sky Tower without abilities. Now that we can enter Masonic here, we can clear the first gap by lifting the bridge with an Octobloon, then jumping. The rest of the shrine is cleared easily by just throwing bombs. Sukumbamar, Papunk, and Ninjas can all be done as normal now that we're in the forest. For our Isaseem, let's go to the Unaboko HQ Cave. It's possible to jump out of bounds, just like in Korak Forest. Unlike there though, even if we glide to the shrine, we can't teleport or get popped in by a cutscene. Instead of that, we can walk up a gap in the geometry and with enough stubbornness, the game will give us an autosave. When it does, reloading it will put Link back in bounds, letting us enter the shrine. As for the inside, it's a proving ground, so most of it's done normally, but getting up past the first layer required me to get some speed food so I can make a jump up this wall to get to the top portion and fight enemies. My Yasi was honestly really frustrating and took a large amount of time. Basically, we have two rooms where we need to move blocks to match the shape on the other side. The first room can be done with Octobloons to flip the blocks little by little and bombs to get them into position. But room 1 is just a warm up as room 2 is the real issue. We don't just have L-shaped blocks and the positions we need to get them in, well, to be frank, they suck. The trick for the first Z-shaped block is to get the other blocks near so they can prop it up once you've got it part way. Then with them as a base, you can carefully put it into position. If your rotation is off like mine was, you can hit these with a weapon to very slightly rotate and move them into place. As for block 2, I'd go for the L-shape, and we can use our tricks we've learned thus far to get it in. The corner block though, we aren't left with anything to prop it up, and the metal barrels didn't really help either. How I finally managed to get it into place was by using two Octobloons and using the wind from a Korok Fron weapon to push it in. I'm terming this Octobloon Tetris. Four left and the hardest of all, 149 and a Demimik Shrine. If anyone is looking at doing this in the future, I suspect there's a spot at the top you could clip. And while I couldn't find a clip here, it would probably be a lot easier than my solution. So instead of that, I opted for trying to recall the ball without recall. And by that I mean Octoballoon it into the pedestal. Turns out it is possible if you shoot it with arrows in midair, it's just extremely difficult and takes a long time. Alright, so to TCU, I have to give a shout out to Dringoder for this one. I knew it was possible to Octoballoon these in, but he helped me realize that these could be shrunk down more than you'd expect. One aside is that I found it a lot easier to throw wings on the ground, because if you drop an ice block while moving it up, it'll slide back to the water. But the wings stop this from happening. With our earlier fused Korok Frond and some Perseverance, all three go in, giving us blessing number 150. 151, Joku Usin, is a shrine encased in walls on every side with no way in. You might initially think we're blocked, but the speedrunning community came to my aid. I wanted to shout out Puke from the Discord here. As it turns out, if you smuggle and infinitely jump, you can clip the underside of the coordinates 1096, negative 3355, though it is very difficult, especially with the clouds we can't clear. Once inside, the camera basically doesn't work, but if you can manage to find this spot, it is possible to clip upwards one more time, but it's even more difficult than the first clip. From here, we're still technically underground, but moving will get an autosave and that save will put us on the ground level and into the shrine, which can be cleared with ease. And for the final, most hardest shrine, Kisinona. This one took me a long time to figure out, and has no potential of working with the fan Zonai devices. 
so, here's the solution. Drop five bombs. Move, drop five more. Do this four times, then trigger them with an arrow. Ta-da! Shrine complete. See, you probably wouldn't notice this if you threw a bomb at the fans as the particles and sounds covers the fact that it's actually rotating. But if we put a bunch down, now you can notice it. And that realization took me 12 hours. Thanks, game! With that, every shrine in Tears of the Kingdom has been completed without any runes and a fairly low amount of glitches, too. I just wanted to give a huge thank you again to the speedrunning community and everyone who viewed and helped on Twitch. Fishman in particular was extremely helpful and helped me solve or make easier a non-trivial amount of shrines, so extra large thanks to him. Dragoder was actually doing the same run as me during my run, and we only found this out right before I finished. So if you want to see his perspective with slightly different rules, go check him out. If you're interested in more out-of-the-box runs, you might enjoy this Breath of the Wild no-jump challenge, or maybe come over and watch one of my runs live on Twitch. But for now, we'll go pick up another game, and if you're interested in what's next, drop a follow here. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.